Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. And on today's show, we're going to teach you how to water just like Goldilocks. Not too much, not too little, just right. Then we're going to talk about combo pots and how to feed and care for them. Then we're going to talk about the vegetable garden. We're giving you some hints on how to deal with those insects and disease and potential problems. We're also going to tackle lawn weed control. And finally, in our perennial primer, we're going to be talking about butterfly bushes. So stay tuned, and we'll be back after this short break. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Does your garden have planting insurance? It can now with Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma. It's the ultimate starter plant food. The secret is a special blend of natural organic plant food, beneficial microbes, and mycorrhizal fungi. The result? Plants grow faster, roots grow deeper, flowers and vegetables flourish. Best of all, every Espoma product is safe for people, pets, and the planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Cole, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomers Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. Well, and watering is the key to getting your garden, landscape, or planters to grow, isn't it? <laughs> They're not going to do it without it, that's, that's for right. sure. <laughs> so, and when you're in the nursery, work in the nursery, and somebody tells you, well, I've got a sprinkler system. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> not gonna work. <laughs> what do you What do you do? Well, you have to. Uh, it depends on what plants you're gonna uh, talk about first. Okay? Well, let Let's talk about that. They just put in, say, some annuals mm -hmm. in their front beds, and that say they are using six inch pots or mm -hmm. even smaller. So we're gonna have it in the ground, right? Yep. Okay. Well, you want to do is you want to deep water them. You're not gonna just sprinkle a little bit and just walk away. Right. The root systems have to be drenched all the way down to the bottom. So that's a key. And if you don't do that, you're going to have problems the next day. They're going to be pretty much uh, dried up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you got to get them off to that first start because when mm -hmm. you think about the traumatic, uh, well, if the plant goes through, they get their roots ripped apart mm -hmm. and they have to go <laughs> yeah. in the ground and then they're yeah. supposed to just look as pretty as they were when nobody touched them. Right. Um, they're going to uh, wilt back no matter what you do. But if they're not getting water, mm -hmm. or if you think, I get, wow. I have a battle with uh, a lot of the irrigation guys where they say, uh, well, you put it on a zone, you put it on for 10 minutes. You know, it's <laughs> like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. No, uh, you, and, and my guide for, for watering uh, is, is what happens in nature. Right. N no decent rain happens in five or 10 minutes. No, it doesn't. Even 20 minutes. <laughs> no, it, it rains doesn't. either all day or uh -huh. it rains for a, a long, long time right. for it to get penetrated into the ground. Right. So and if it only rains for maybe an hour or two, it's not going to happen. Well, it generally not, unless right. it's a downpour, and then mm -hmm. that's different. Right. But a sprinkler system is meant for the lawn. Right. And a lot of times it can be the source of problems oh. in our lawn. Mm -hmm disease problems mm -hmm. that's right yeah, yeah and boy. anyway <laughs> and it's for established lawns mm -hmm. so sprinkler systems right. rule number one you want to do more at one time mm -hmm. 
and less often. Less often. So you're going to put your sprinkler timer on for, say, an hour, mm -hmm. but then only do it like every three days. Wow. But, you know, right now I'm holding up my index finger. Yeah, that's good. That is... That is, is my probe. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you stick it in the soil. Stick in the soil, yeah. And you find out whether you it's need to water or not. or not. Yeah. And you develop a pattern over that. Mm -hmm. Especially things in pots, I'll lend. Oh. Uh, how critical is that one? It is. And mm -hmm. and now, and, and even things in the ground, right. break out your garden hose. Oh, yes. And use your garden hose to water any new plantings, whether it's small cell pack annuals mm -hmm. or whether it's a, a great big tree. Right. Because you're going to water the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And one of the things with watering that you don't even think of, it's not about necessarily just getting it wet. Mm -hmm. It's about compacting the soil mm -hmm. around that root so it, right. those roots don't dry out because there's air pockets. Right. Oh, yes. So you want, you're basically helping it to settle in. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Oh, yeah. I think the hardest thing is the shrubs and the trees watering those when, yep. you know, we have people coming in, oh, you know, I water it. And how do you, do you water it? Oh, you know, I just uh, took my hose out and just went over it real quick. Yeah. Oh, no. no, no. <laughs> you can't just get the top sweat. No. You need to, to get deep, deep penetrating watering, mm -hmm. right, all the way right. down to the root. Mm -hmm. And you got to think of it think of it this way, that you need right. to water through that plant so that it's actually going back into the aquifer where it right. came from. <laughs> so yeah. give it a lot of water. Right. And not every day, right? Because that's another problem, over water. As long as you're watering enough at one time, mm -hmm. no, not every day. Mm -hmm. right. So. Got to watch that. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. So hanging baskets. Oh. How do I know how much water to give my hanging basket? Uh, your finger probe again. <laughs> yeah, that's part of it. But also by weight. By weight, yes. Feel how heavy it is. Mm -hmm. um, I've been known to take my finger and scoop out a little piece of soil oh. and see if it's moist or not. <laughs> right. But hanging baskets, and you talked about not giving enough water. Right. Hanging baskets need to be watered to the point, and this is, this is how we teach it at Bloomers. Mm -hmm. You need to water the hanging basket and we have, I think, oh. a couple of weeks ago, we had a count of over 500 hanging baskets oh, <laughs> yes, on, on site. So oh, we, we know we want them to be alive yes, and be in as good or yeah. better condition when you get them right. home mm -hmm. because of how we water and take care of right. things. So, mm -hmm. one, you have to, first of all, not put a heavy stream. You have to have a water breaker right. on the end of your hose. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Next, you want to put that so that it's in the center or dropping like rain, mm -hmm. you know, not straight in, but kind of having an arc to it right. so that it isn't power washing mm -hmm. the soil <laughs> away from right. the roots. That's right. Okay. Oh, my goodness. That's, uh, that's often a big problem oh, yeah. where yeah. all of a sudden people are watering, but they just let the, the hose either like, <sighs> oh, man, it's, it, uh, it's <laughs> bad. Wash. It's bad. So, so you have a water breaker, you're mm -hmm. putting it on your plant. Right. And the key is, is to water it. Continuously, uh, until? don't until it is coming out of the bottom, the bottom yeah. of the hole mm -hmm. where that is, right. and that's where the saucer. And a lot of plants now have in, inter, internal saucers, right? So where they have this little drain hole in the center, right? And that when the water comes through there, you're not oh, done. Okay. You're not done. You yeah. want to overflow the sides to come out. Yep, mm -hmm. because if you are just doing it when it comes through the bottom. Mm -hmm. When the soil that hanging baskets, containers, and, and right. even some of the soils that you're buying and using, right. mm -hmm. there's actually no soil in it at all. No soil. No wow. soil. Mm -hmm. um, you think about our favorite, Gardener's Gold, right? Right. Gardener's Gold is peat moss, mm -hmm. bark, fines. bark fines. It's got a little manure. manure. It's got, uh, let's see, uh, bat guano. Bat guano, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Nowhere in that list does it say soil. No, it doesn't. It right. is a soilless mix, and, and all the production right. growers are using that because they can control what the fertilizer and nutrient uptake is. Oh. There's there's no weeds in it, Nothing. and it still has nutrient value. Wow. Now, but what happens is that if they if you let your hanging basket to dry out, mm. it shrinks. Shrinks. Yep. And it oh. leaves along the sidewall a direct route right to the Oof. and root meaning like. 
you know, the blue root, blue root? Yeah. You know, not the root as <laughs> in the right. root of a plant, uh, a direct root right to that drainage spot. Oh, okay. And so you water and you think you're done, and, but and the not. plant is not absorbing any of that water that oh, you're putting boy. in. It's going right yeah. to the drainage hole. You think you're done. Mm -hmm. The key is making sure that you overflow the sides right. of the pot mm. and the drainage hole. Right. Oh, okay. Then you have adequate drainage. Oh, that's good. Then you have it watered enough mm. and then it is rehydrated to where it's swelled and it has sealed off mm -hmm. those ho that space between the side wall of the pot right. and the root I now like you're back to, to normal because otherwise you're you're going every day mm -hmm. oh no yeah. i water it all the time i really don't i believe you yeah. but the problem is is you're not putting enough water in. water yeah yeah can you over water a plant mm -hmm. once once okay so so let me let me help you go ahead i have i have a plant mm -hmm. and i went and and i just got it and okay. i watered it like really really heavy i mean really really heavy. Well. It, it now weighs like it came in it weighed about five pounds now it weighs about right. 20 pounds i watered it like crazy like crazy will i kill that plant if you water it again no mm -mm. No. no no the plants it's like rain <laughs> right remember a few weeks ago Actually, it's last week. Mm -hmm. Had all that rain. Oh, yeah. Do you remember how fast the plants dried out immediately after that oh, rain? Quick. The cells of the plants, they, they, cool. open, they open up those leaves. They release that moisture yeah. into the air quick. because they want to get those roots. Yeah. It's the exchange of, of, of oxygen. Mm -hmm. Air smells a little better after yeah. rain. Yeah. yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> like is it the it. rain or are, is it the plants? Oh, <laughs> good question. That's good. <laughs> All right. But All right. in any case, mm -hmm. what happens is after a rain, after water, that the plants will automatically go into like, all right, I'm going to start releasing that moisture well, through sure. my leaves, through the leaf surface and things. Okay. So they do dry out. They dry out. How about that? And that, like we were talking about, the index mm -hmm. finger, right. mm -hmm. next time you go, before you put any water right. in it, test it. Test it, yeah. If, the, if it's moist, right. let it go. Yeah. Let that little bit of surface soil, let it dry uh, out. Feel the weight of your hanging basket yes. and feel that weight. If it feels a little heavy, uh -huh. you know, let it go. That's right. You want it to dry out a little bit between waterings, but not wilt. Right. You want it to, to have that exchange of oxygen in the root system. Okay. Because that's how right. you kill plants from overwatering. It's not so much that it's the water that killed them. It's the fact that they have... They have no oxygen exchange. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not fish. Right. Like they can't get <laughs> any, you know, they don't have gills. <laughs> but right. uh, so what happens, they get smothered. Wow. Uh, and that's what happens. Yeah, too so much. too much. But mm -hmm. again, I would rather see somebody getting to that point because they can always back off. Back off, yeah. They can always back off from how much they're watering. Then, then, then drying it out. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. That's right. That's wonderful. Uh, what challenges with watering do you have at your own home? Uh, setting up my uh, hose and getting it around <laughs> in front of my house. <laughs> hey, that, that's one thing that uh -huh. there that you can always set up, um, like a a catch basin uh -huh. or off your gutters yeah. and in, in an inconvenient spot. That's you right. can use that. I'm thinking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So conserve. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's right. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. But listen, if you have questions about how to water, that's right. call the hotline. There We're there to help you. Yes, we are. And mm -hmm. again, you, there is no timetable. Right. You have to develop a timetable over a period of a few weeks even. Oh, yeah. Say it's all right. It's every third day or it's every fourth day. It rained this day, so all I don't right. have to do it for three days. Yeah. And Again, full sun hanging baskets, That's they right. need you oh, because yes. they're not going to get the same type of moisture out mm. of uh, rain and That's such. Right. So you're going to be watering those. There you go. All right. Get oh, your hoses thank out. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back after this. Is your lawn being ruined by moles and voles? Bonide has the solution. Bonide Mole Max is an effective repellent to use against moles, voles, rabbits, gophers, groundhogs, squirrels, skunks, and other burrowing animals. Just apply three or four times per year to send nuisance animals' pests away. 
Because it's all natural, Bonod's Molmax repellent is safe to use in areas where children and pets play. Molmax is available in a convenient five pound shaker applicator for use in flower and vegetable gardens. The larger 10 pound bag covers up to 5,000 square feet and is great for treating lawn areas. Molmax is also available in a ready to spray applicator. Just connect to your garden hose, turn it on and spray. Bonide products are family made in America. Molmax can be found at these fine retail stores. Harleysville Ace, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Dublin Agway, Dublin, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com. Spring has sprung and it's time to visit Bloomer's Home and Garden Center. Bring us a soil sample and we'll test your soil's pH free. Heck, bring us a water sample from your pond too and we'll test that for ammonia and other critical levels. Did you know that Bloomer's has a pond department? We have all of the water treatments, fish and plants to keep your pond looking glorious year round. Are you looking for that four-step lawn program? Bloomer's carries Scott's, Jonathan Green, Bonide and Espoma's organic step program. Need to seed? Bloomers has its own blend of seed called Township Turf. It's just the right balance of rye, fescue, and bluegrass to give you a spectacular lawn. It's also perfect for repairing bare spots and matches extraordinarily well to sodded lawns. Don't forget the garden. Bloomers carries bumper crop soil amendment and all the fertilizers a garden could need, both organic and inorganic. The best vegetables start as seedlings from Bloomers. Come visit those who know the friendly folks at Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey, just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. For directions and information, visit www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. They know combo pots. Pre-done combo pots are probably the hottest things going. Used to be a time where you had to do your own. And I encourage everybody actually to do that. Mm -hmm. They'll learn more about plants and they have unique, you know, situations where Mm -hmm. say you're, you're, you're in shaded area. A lot of times, like we have some that are pre-done that are for shade that have caladiums in them and and some other things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where the majority of them are all meant for full sun and that you're going to get it. Here we go. Reinforcing that brown thumb myth. Yeah. I heard the other day, black thumb. Oh, black no. Thumb. Oh. That's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want that, huh, no. No, no. no, because it's not true. No. It is not true. No, not. So we're going to talk about how to take care of that combo pot because it, now you have a bunch of plants. Oh, so oh. How, many, how many plants would you say, like those 14-inch combo pots, mm-hmm. how many plants do you think are in there about? I would say at least. Eight or nine. So eight or nine plants yes. in a 14-inch <laughs> round pot. My goodness. <laughs> <It's a lot laughs> I mean, of, that's a lot of plants. That's a lot of plants. So you have watering, like we just talked about, yeah, right? Critical. Watering is essential. Yes. Essential. Mm-hmm. Essential. Yep. But it's also nutrients. Oh, big time. All that. A- absolutely. Mm-hmm. I would even encourage every week to be using a water-soluble fertilizer. Mm-hmm. And like, let's see, we've got those of you looking on YouTube. Yes. Uh-huh. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and that we have right uh, here. Julio, what is? What do I have in my hand? This is one of our favorite products, by the way. It is. Okay. Jack's Classic. We love Jack's. Yeah. It's one of our favorites here at Bloomers. Classic coat. All right. With crystal green. And this is a time release fertilizer that you need to put in first. That's right. Okay. That's right. Wonderful. Always available to the to the plant, mm-hmm. and it's not a it's 
water soluble to a point, but it also say it says time released because what happens it also releases with heat. What about that? Um, so in say you put you fed them and you got them early and you're feeding them in say uh, April, and we had that cold snap. That's right, cold. It's not oh, releasing the same way as if it were summertime. So it slows up a little bit. It does. Uh-huh. It does. Uh, it's good for, I think, but probably three-month formula. Four, four months right here. Four months. Look at that. Wow. So that's one, really, uh-huh. you need one, maybe two, two applications. You would go with two, huh, Lynn? Yeah, you know. Yeah. I know, but the, plant, yeah. the and <laughs> plants are pigs. Oh, Again, yeah. the, the, in those combo pots. Uh-huh. Oh. and. Here's a lot of plants. Right. <laughs> You're talking about nine plants yeah. in, a, in a little area. Mm-hmm. Now, second thing is the water soluble. Now, with Jack's, right. they have what's it <laughs> looks strange because it's it's it looks like petunia feed, right? Yeah. yeah. But did you notice how the F is capitalized and the E is small on feed? It is, it is different. It's because it has iron in it. Iron, uh-huh. All of those funky that. new plants that we have, right. all... All the hybrid petunias, caliber coa, mm-hmm. all of the new verbenas, right. um, bacopa, uh, namesia, scavola. Wow. All of those, mm-hmm. all of those love to love have that. iron. Mm-hmm. And this product is made specifically. So basically, I mentioned all of those new proven winner. Sure. They, they'll take That's that. it. That's it. That's right what here. you want to use. Mm-hmm. And that we actually run this through our irrigation. And we have a low plants. dose of mm-hmm. uh, fertilizer that we use on all of our plants, right. except our organics. We, right. we shut it down when we're watering our organics. That's why we look so great. That's right. Ah. <laughs> hey, we don't want to reveal all of our secrets. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right. But, uh, uh, again, that's classic coat. Classic coat. It's, that would be, the we always say this, granular fertilizer granular. and yes. water soluble. Water soluble. Can't go wrong. Nope. You got to use both. Yep. And yep. two weeks, right? Every, every other week for the water soluble. Right. That's what we recommend, but you could use okay. it up to every week. Oh, okay. Give you a little bit more. Uh, yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to grow. It's going to grow. It's going to yeah, make things gonna grow. grow. Yeah, really okay? nice. It's going to make them green. It's going to make them flower. Flower, bigger. Yeah. They will be beautiful. Yep. Yeah. So that's, that's the key right there, Helen. Yep. Yep. Because you're watering so much and all the nutrients are leaving, right? And that's, you bring up a good point. In a self-contained area, mm-hmm. right? Right. That sometimes, if you ever look at a, you know, is it, oh, you can always see it on the green pots. Okay. Take a look at some of those four-inch green pots, and on the inside lip, they look like they're stained with like a powder. Have you ever noticed that? No, I haven't. Take a look. Okay. Geraniums, you can see it Geraniums. a lot. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Those are salts. Oh, the salts. From the fertilizer. Ah. That if you don't water enough, right. that that salt, instead of going out and away from the plant like it's supposed to, right. if you're only watering on that top little bit of soil, what happens is that that salt gathers around the stems. Oh, no. And all of a sudden it starts rotting the stem off oh, and bro. killing the plants. Mm. So you think it's like, oh, I'm oh. overwatering. You're and not. in fact, it's the opposite. How about that? You're not. Having that water flush through the bottom that carries the salts away, right? And that, uh, and normally, if it was planted in the ground, that would happen. But because it's in a container, pot. it's condensed around that stem. Right. So you need to give it more water so it flushes through the bottom, and, and then give it a break. Mm-hmm. Again, more at one time, less often. Less often right. More at one time, less, less often. often. That's a good rule. It is. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, you have the fertilizer that you're using. Mm-hmm. You're using a water soluble as well. That's right. But it's all about water in between and making sure that you're giving enough water. Enough water, yeah. Key. It's so critical. Yep. Critical. Yep. yep. It, it is. With trying to do your own pots, um, I suggest uh, one, it's making sure that you're trying something different. Uh, yeah. You may have, in some of your pots, you may have a plant that dies. You may have a section that all of a sudden is dead. Right. Go ahead and transplant it something out. in it. Yeah. It would look good. Pull it out. Yep. Pull it. Yep. Yep. That's wonderful. And, and it's always, it, it freshens things up. It does. Yeah. Also, you can't be afraid to go ahead and cut things back. Mm-hmm. Right. That thing grows over the top, and the center becomes a little empty. Mm-hmm. 
Cut it back. Cut it back to the right. lip. Cut it back hard. You're, you'll, you'll be terrified the first time you do it <laughs> because you think right. that you're cutting everything back yeah. and you're killing it. But what does that do, Len? It flushes out, makes wow. the plant divide, becomes right. uh, fuller, wow. and just looks like a better plant. Look at that. So that's, that new. combo pot that you bought mm-hmm. that's starting to get a little tired looking that's sometime right. in late July, uh-huh. give it a haircut. There you go. <laughs> give it a haircut. Cut it so that it's either halfway up uh-huh. or even up to the lip mm-hmm. of the pot. Cut it hard. Keep right. maintaining it right. because what's happening now is that the leaves, and you're used to a pattern of watering, those leaves where the transpiration used to happen and it used to be able to release all that water, right. now you may not have to water it as much Oh, I see. because okay. all of a sudden it's holding that water right. more. Mm-hmm. So you just take your time. Take just your take time. your yeah. time. Learn these things. Uh-huh. And, hey, hotline's there. Uh-huh. We're there at Bloomers. We're there to help you learn about plants. Uh-huh. No such thing as a brown thumb. That's right. There That's you it. go. See That's that? It. That's easy. <laughs> it is. It, 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 it yeah. is. It's it's not we hard. talked about two products, and again, it's watering. Watering, yeah. It's watering. Right. And watering. you'll get that, right? Yeah. Yeah, you get that. Absolutely. Yep. Just use your old finger and then uh, feel That's it. That's right. You, feel you the use your, your index <laughs> probe. There you go. <laughs> and develop a pattern. There you go. All right. In our next segment, we're going to talk about vegetables. Oh, wow. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for the Bloomers Garden Minute. The Garden Minute is brought to you by Bloomers in the Garden, Philadelphia Garden Radio. Find us on the radio dial or on the web at bloomers.com. This is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden with the Garden Minute. Wow, what a great time to be a gardener. You can plant anything right now. Vegetables, flowers, roses, trees, shrubs, and perennials. The possibilities are endless. No matter what you plant, you need to do these three things to ensure success. One, make sure you're adding soil amendment when you're planting. Bumper crop is our top choice, but even if it's just cow manure or peat moss, you only get one shot at improving the soil right at the root of your plants, so don't pass it up. Two, after planting, apply a granular type fertilizer made specifically for your type of plant. Evergreens, flowers, and vegetables all have specific dietary needs. Don't worry, if you're not sure what to get, your local garden center will help you match the right fertilizer to the right plant. A granular fertilizer will give your new plants a consistent feeding of nutrients. Think of it as three square meals for your plants that you reapply once every four to six weeks. Three, use a water-soluble fertilizer every two weeks. That's the kind you water your plants with. You know the stuff, the kind that tints your water blue. I recommend Jack's Classic, but others are available. Miracle Grow just came out with an organic water soluble fertilizer. When using water soluble fertilizers, they are immediately available to your plants. Think of it as those vitamins you take. It's an extra boost supplementing a regular diet. And for heaven's sake, buy one of those feeders so all you have to do is attach it to your garden hose and go. No mixing, no blue fingers. But remember, those feeders are only calibrated for water soluble fertilizer. They are not calibrated to spray insects or disease control. This is Len Schroeder for the Garden Minute, and we'll see you in the garden. Today's Garden Minute was brought to you by Bloomers in the Garden, Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Also brought to you by VPG, the Fertilome people. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and EcoPeat. EcoPeat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to Fertilone peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilone succulent potting mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilone by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniels Garden Center, Sumney Town Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gaspers Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. (laughs) Julio, 
we're back. Oh, yes. You're supposed to read this part. Oh, yes, I am. But then again, <laughs> I'll take care of it. There you go. You know, if you're growing vegetables, uh-huh. right, then you've got issues. Uh-oh. You've got issues that may happen, yeah. maybe not. The weather's been perfect, though. It has a little been. bit cold in the beginning. Yeah, it was. A little yeah. bit. Not you know, too bad. We, we just talked to somebody about how they lost their cucumbers Uh-oh. because <laughs> they went through that cold snap yes. around Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Yeah, mm-hmm. cucumbers like it hot. Yeah, they do. But it's the other plants, the creepy crawlies that yeah. we want to talk about, right? Right, all the little guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming. They're coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, again, if you're watching on YouTube, we have, oh gosh, seven? Different types of insecticides, uh, at least, that are on our and and disease control. Right. Back in the day, they used to be all chemicals. Out of all of these that we have, there is really only one, that, and that's eight. Eight. Huh. Right. It's still around. That is mm-hmm. considered a true chemical, not organic. The okay. rest are all organic. How about that? Pretty amazing. Things have changed. They have. They have. Now, what, what would you use eight for if everything else is um, organic? Um, it would probably be something that was one mm-hmm. the others didn't seem to control. I would okay. try an organic first. First? Yep. Okay. So, ag- again, some of the tough things like maybe cucumber beetle, right? you know, some of those things. And, mm-hmm. like, we talked about cucumber beetle. The problem with cucumber beetle, uh, we did this on, on another show, Cucumber beetle goes and lays its eggs, and it's actually, the beetle is kind of pretty. It's spotted, and yeah. it's kind of a yellowy color, Right. and it will lay its eggs on the vine, and then it will go, and it'll take the, the eggs will grow and hatch, and then they'll go and tunnel into the vines, the vi- Oh boy! and it'll, the vines will seal over, and they'll be protected from any sprays wow. if you don't kill the adults before they lay the eggs. Okay. Uh, a lot of organics, they don't have a long residual. Mm-hmm. So you have to, they're truly a contact spray. So it's not like they, they linger. Sure. Um, so and, you might have a problem trying to get that timing then. Right. Mm-hmm. So you want to, you want to get them. And if you do get the timing down, uh-huh. like again, it's now. And, uh-huh. and what I would do is just go on a spray routine. Okay. Like for instance, the tomato vegetable that I have in my hand from, okay. from Bonide, mm-hmm. that, that, is a sulfur and pyrethrin. Now, pyrethrin mm-hmm. okay. is a, uh, it is from, uh, I almost chrysanthemums? Said, uh, thank you, I almost said poinsettias. <laughs> no, it's not oh, from no, poinsettias. Not, it's from, uh, yeah. it's from <laughs> chrysanthemums. chrysanthemums. Yep. And uh-huh. because I'm thinking that there's also, like you pick up a, uh-huh. one of the insecticides, you'll see that it may say pyrethroid. pyrethroid. That is man-made mocking what is in the um what is a pyrethrin so it's a man-made pyrethrin so those are two different things that they are the chemistry mm-hmm. is almost identical oh it is but you can't say a pyrethroid is organic because okay. it is not it is not it is not because a added, lot of those you've added to it no oh. no it's it's again it's it's um as i'm making a man-made version of a pyrethrin, but oh, I'm okay. not getting the materials from a, a uh, chrysanthemum. Okay. Oh, okay. So they're taking that? the chemistry and using it using so that they're wow. creating a How man-made that? version. That's, of a, it. that's amazing. <laughs> it, it's amazing. It, it yeah. you'll see it in a, okay. a lot of times. You'll see it in uh, like flea and tick control. Oh yes, you know okay. for your for your pets. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty safe. Don't yes. don't have an issue. Uh-huh. I personally do not have an issue with it, but a, a right. purist, organic person would. Would. Okay. Absolutely would. Um, you have something that's new to us that it is, a, it's a, B-safe. actually they call it Be Safe. Be Safe, three in one garden spray, huh? Right. Wow. And we have a, I have a personal thing about, about our, our bees. I, yes, I, I am concerned with the, are, the yeah. uh, hive collapse within honeybees. Yes. And that uh, a lot of it is blamed on, uh, insecticides being used. Mm-hmm. Imidacloprid is, is one of them that they say is, is but <laughs> I, I can, I remember seeing a video where somebody is spraying a tree and this is a professional spraying a tree uh-huh. with imidacloprid right. with a beehive on the opposite side of the tree. No kidding. Idiot. Wow. You know, it, please. We had shirts oh. made up at Bloomers that, that right, it's like, uh-huh. you know, 
be be safe, be right? Safe. Be safe. That's right. And um, mm. just read the label, follow the follow label the instructions yes. uh, on even the ones that are not organic. Mm-hmm. They're safe. They're safe. But even the organics, like some of the organics, oh. are just as poisonous to bees. That's right. I noticed that. You you got to be careful. Yep. Mm-hmm. But that one in your hand is not. What What is the active ingredient in there, Holy Ellen? The active ingredient in this is um, sesame oil. And what else? And other ingredients is 95%. So it's sesame oil. There's water. There's fish oil in there, too, by the way. Yeah. How about that? Hmm. So it's going to... Lecithin, s- potassium, sorbate. Sounds like my vitamin. <laughs> it does. Take every morning. <laughs> That's right. So that will coat the insect and kill it but it will not harm bees. And this is spray on. That is a spray on, yeah, right? Concent- it's a concentrate, concentrate that you would put in a sprayer. Mm-hmm. Um, you could absolutely use it in one of the hose end sprayers. Hose end spray. And remember, right. we were right. talking about water-soluble water fertilizer. Soluble. Water-soluble fertilizer, fertilizer. Feeders, feeders are not calibrated for insecticides or, or yeah. uh, herbicides or fungicides. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, use your feeder as a feeder, feeder don't be stupid and put use it for something else. Yeah, no, we don't want that. You're putting no. your it's not calibrated. Yeah. No. You need a separate type of sprayer. Mm-hmm. Um, our friends at Bonnet have one and it is awesome. Right. Yeah, it it they just do. you pour, you can pour the whole concentrate into In the there. bottle. Adjust it for what the dilution rate is. Mm -hmm. It does not mix in the container. Nice. And then you just pour the concentrate back into the bottle and store it. How easy is that? (laughs) It's all done for you. Just cough up the $12 and buy one. Yep, cheap. It's cheap and it's easy because you just, all of a sudden you have a sprayer. You don't need to mix it. That's right. You don't need to do anything. It creates a a siphon. Mm -hmm. Creates a siphon as the water passes over the little tube. And that little tube siphons out the correct yeah. amount of proportioned insecticide, disease control, or herbicide. The only thing I would do is that exactly. I would have two sprayers, one that is meant for uh, for Organic. weed control oh, and right. one that is meant for insect control. Insect control. Okay. All right. Separate those two. Yes. Mm-hmm. Nice. Absolutely. All right. So That's wonderful. Again, we're, there's eight is the one that we were talking about that is right. an inorganic but right. safe safe um yeah. and that on all of your insecticides it's going to say how long can i mm-hmm. use it like for instance days till harvest right like for instance uh the tomato vegetable uh control which is again that's the sulfur and pyrethrins mm-hmm. that can be sprayed up to the day of harvest oh wow so you could that's pick it the good. same day and, mm-hmm. and be safe um, but unlike eight correct unlike eight but i'm not sure mm-hmm. it Take a look at the label. You're, you've got it in your hand. Okay. And that we also have neem oil. Now, neem oil there is is being used a in lot. so many oh, different, goodness. you know, so All many over. different ones. I, I mean, neem oil they'll say is a fungicide, miticide, insecticide. Right. You know, that's marketing. I mean, it's going to control mites, which is a good thing because it used mm-hmm. to be all you could use. There used to be this product which was my go-to all the time was, was isotox do you remember isotox, isotox? Uh-uh. no <laughs> going way back. come on going way come back. on don't you remember you've worked <laughs> for us for a long time isotox was it was a systemic insecticide systemic. and then it was it was it just worked yeah. um now neem oil will control mites wow so you don't necessarily need to have right now we still have i mean do you remember orthene Orthene, yeah, that I do. Uh, we still have orthene. Orthene okay. is in the systemic insect spray uh, by Bonine, mm. and that's the same active ingredient as that orthene. orthene. Oh, okay. Yeah. So some of them are still around, and you yeah. know. Yeah, I think some things don't yeah. change. Huh? So, did you find days to harvest yet on that eight product? Uh, application instructions a few hours prior to application. Uh, uh, Twenty-four hours, not now, more than ten times. Slugs? Per did year. you? You you live near the. the sh- the shade, right? So, do you have any issues with sl- slugs? No, I don't. Yeah, uh, I this year with how as as much moisture as we have, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised as people yeah. seeing slugs. Oh yeah, those silvery trails. Because you know you you don't see them on you you don't see them because the they ground. feed at night. That's right. They're eating. So you, you but <laughs> what you'll see is you'll see their their slime trail mm-hmm. where you look on the sidewalk. Or the driveway, and it and it shows this like little silvery oh, looking trail. Yeah. Looks like what the heck? Who spilled something? <laughs> because it looks like a little drip, a little dripping. Yeah. And those are slugs. Slimy. <laughs> those are from slugs or snails. Or snails. Or snails. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, and and like that dusting that, right, right? And to use that, it it's going to be bug and slug killer. Mm-hmm. That rhymes. Also organic because it's iron phosphate. Oh, okay, good. Again, easy. Also, you could use uh, mm-hmm. uh, DE, diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth, right? That works like on a lot of any mm-hmm. soft-bodied insects, mm-hmm. caterpillars, right. things Everything. like that. Nice and safe. Yeah. Wonderful. Good job it is. Something. It is. Ask your garden center. That's right. And Bring in a, a sample. Yep. That's right. Bring in a sample. And if you're going to use these products, read the labels, okay? Right. And uh, be protected. That's right. And and use, again, use it according to the instructions. That's right. All right. Um, if you have questions, contact Bloomers or contact, That's make right. sure you're calling that hotline. It's hotline. 609-685-1880. Yeah. Uh, we can walk you through it right. and give you suggestions, both organic and or inorganic meats. Mm-hmm. So, again, use yeah. that hotline. Yeah, That's yeah. what it's there for. That's right. All there right. All right. Next segment coming up, we're talking about weeds Weed. in the lawn. Uh-oh. That may uh, not be an organic. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it after this break. Introducing Miracle Grow's next big thing performance organics. Finally, organics that work. Tested and refined by plant scientists for twice the results. Guaranteed. Don't grow a snack, grow a feast. Don't grow a flower, grow a million dollar view. This new organic collection of soil and plant food is what you've always wanted. No compromise, just results. Guaranteed. Miracle Grow Performance Organics. Are you looking for a weed control product that is people and pet safe? Bonod has the answer with their Burnout Weed and Grass Killer. Burnout Weed and Grass Killer is derived from natural ingredients and kill many types of actively growing weeds and grasses. Its fast-acting ingredients do not translocate and are rainproof when dry. Burnout is great for use in driveways, sidewalks, patios, at the base of mature trees, around buildings, and for preparing flower beds and vegetable gardens for planting. Burnout can be used just about any place where you need effective control of weeds and grasses. Bonide is family made in America. Burnout weed and grass killer can be found at these fine retailers. Dambley's Garden Center, Berlin, New Jersey, Raritan Valley Agway, Raritan, New Jersey, Rosedale Mills, Pennington, New Jersey. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609 685 one eight eight zero, and we'll see you in the garden. All right, Len. We're all set, aren't we? Uh, I think so. <laughs> hey, you know what time it is? It's what time, time is? to think about that weed and feed. That step two. That yellow bag. Yeah. Weed and feed. What's it called? Weed and feed. Well, depends on what you, who you, what brand you bought, but it is known mm-hmm. industry standards of weed and feed. So. Again, that's going to be for broadleaf weed control in your lawn, and it's time. It's time. It's right time. Now, huh? Plenty. First of all, we're going to go through the life of a weed. Wow. Okay, it's, <laughs> it's almost biblical, where where it wants to go and it wants to grow and it wants right. to take over the earth mm-hmm. and inhabit the earth and it wants to go. And so, what that happens is it grows and then it goes and forms a blossom, which sometimes we don't even know it's flowering. Yeah. And then it forms seed, and then it spreads its seed all over all over the place. <laughs> and then instead of having one dandelion or one chickweed or one, you've got thousands. thousands. So wow. it's important Spread. to make sure you take care of those weeds now, yeah. or else you'll have thousands later. Well, no lawn. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have a nice weed patch. That's right. Anyway, we don't want that. <laughs> no, we don't. A lawn is a beautiful uh, thing. So we're here to talk about put down that step two now. Okay, so that weed and feed, put yeah. that down now. Now, if you only have fertilizers, like so, say for instance, you didn't put down a crabgrass control, yeah. I would put down a crabgrass control mm-hmm. now again. Mm-hmm. And why am I saying that, Julio? Do you know? Because those, there are some that uh, crabgrass that came out later. That's right. And now you have to take care of those. 
That's right. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Green has a great one that has dimension. Oh, dimension. So yeah. it will not only control some of the crabgrass to prevent it, but it also will control it by killing it even if up to its third leaf stage. So there if you, you didn't put down a crabgrass control, put it now. You can put it down now. There you go. Um, as long as you if you had to seed and mm-hmm. you've cut your seed a couple of times, that seed has come up and you've cut it at least twice, mm-hmm. you should be okay That's to put good. down dimension. There you go. But what we're going to talk about is all right. Then you still have broadleaf weeds to That's contend right. with, like plantain and, and, and oxalis. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and exactly. Uh. And of course, dandelions. Mm-hmm. You can use a spray, mm-hmm. and one of my favorites is Weed Beater Ultra. Weed Beater Ultra, right? Oh. Mm-hmm. Works when it's cold. Works when it's hot. hot. It's it's safe. It's, you want to do it when it's below eighty five degrees. Mm-hmm. And you want to hit the weeds. You could go to each weed and do it, or you could do the entire lawn. It's not going to kill the grass, Mm -hmm. but it will kill the weeds. Mm -hmm. Concentrate and uh, spray. Yep. And there's there's an organic alternative. Mm -hmm. Now, (laughs) it's interesting that this will actually control disease, and and it controls moss as well. Wow. So it's going to control broadleafs, moss, and lichen. Lichen, wow. We about we that. talked about this once before, yes, right? We when we were talking about our moss control, mm-hmm. uh, weed beater, F E, F E, right? So F E, iron. Iron. Again. What it does is it gives it a dose of iron that is safe for your lawn. So it may green up your lawn, Look at that. but the moss can't handle it, or some of the other weeds can't handle it, and they mm-hmm. go away, mm-hmm. That's like That's they're helpful. supposed to. That's right. Now those are, we have, these is uh, the weed beater ultra does plenty of uh, weeds. Oh my gosh! It, it, the, it is. You're talking what? Everything like you mentioned before. Everything right. from 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 dandelions, plantain, right. uh, dozens and dozens and dozens. And then you have selective like the one we have here. Well, and the, both of both the ones we also have a chickweed. We talked uh, last week a, a little about a chickweed clover and oxalis. Right. Where that is a specific. Uh, herbicide, but Mm -hmm. you'll get most of the results from Weed Beater Ultra. Ultra. This is if you have uh, a large section where you're having problems. problems. Sometimes like a weed and feed will not kill it. It'll set it back, turn it brown a little bit, and it Mm -hmm. actually keeps growing. Uh, And and one thing about weed and feed that Mm -hmm. I want to add, because we're going to be going to our next segment shortly. Quick, say it. It's got to be wet when you put it down. You want your weed and feed to stick to the leaves of the grass and the weeds so that it penetrates into that weed and go. it releases the uh, er- herbicide mm-hmm. so that it kills the kills weed. It. If you're doing it when it's really dry, it's right. going to bounce off, go into the ground, and then you're yep. just doing it's fertilizing. Mm-hmm. So you want it to stick to it. You do not want to water it in. You want it to stick to, to the weed. So yep. your shoes may get a little wet. Yep. <laughs> if you're if you're doing it and right. you don't have control of when you put it down, water your lawn water a little bit, bit, get the tops right. the tops of your grass wet, Boys. then put it down. There you want you it go. to stick to the weeds and to your lawn. There you go. It's not going to hurt your grass, mm. but it will hurt All the weeds. Right. There you go, guys. That's it. Thank All right, you. next segment mm. coming up. It's yes, our perennial primer. Oh, we love it. All right, <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Go. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomers Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. Tired of pale green, weedy results from four-step lawn programs? That's because they don't do anything for the soil. The New American Lawn four-step program feeds the lawn and the soil. Magical Plus, a unique soil food that adjusts soil pH 
loosens hard soil, and feeds soil microbes is the key difference. Without the right soil conditions, you'll never enjoy a great lawn. Competitive programs simply don't match up. So feed your lawn and your soil with the new American Lawn 4-Step Program by Jonathan Green. Jonathan Green products can be found at these fine stores. Action Hardware, Wilmington, Delaware. Hokessen Hardware, Hokessen, Delaware. Gaspers Garden Center, Richboro, Pennsylvania. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Okay, Len, we're back. We are. And this week's perennial primer is butterfly bushes. It's not a perennial, but it works great in a perennial garden. That's right. Doesn't it? You know, it, it's funny because when butterfly bushes became the rage, right. we didn't know where to put them. Wow. Like, were they in? Were they a perennial? That's That's right. In the beginning, they were considered a perennial. How about that? But they're actually a woody shrub, uh-huh. and that uh, you'll find them in, in the nursery and sometimes in the perennial area because they're they're such a great plant for it. It is wonderful. Yeah. My favorite, Pugster. Mm-hmm. We've Pugster. got one on the table here. Ah, it's gorgeous. You know why I love it? What's the matter? It's flowers. Uh-huh. Uh, it flowers are big and they're and they're <laughs> and they call it Pugster like the dog, the dog. a pug. Uh-huh. The flowers are real like stout. They're not like you know, a pipe cleaner like yeah. some of the the regular Little varieties thin, are. Thin, kind of thin. It's fat. It looks fat. it looks like a lilac. Yeah, it looks like a lilac. You like that fat? I do like that. Big fat. It, it, it's kind of like beautiful. myself. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it, the one thing that uh, is different uh, is it doesn't get tall. Oh no! Now I'm just fat and tall. Oh yeah. You this are. is thanks, Julio. <laughs> 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 anyway, this is two foot tall. That's it. And if those wow. flowers uh-huh. are almost half of the height. Whew. Think about that. Like the flowers are going to be six inches uh-huh. or longer. So it can't uh-huh. get, and I know that we've had some in flower, flower. in in summer mm-hmm. that have just been tremendous, and uh-huh. that they they were almost a foot long. <laughs> and the and at the base uh-huh. there was six inches wide. Yeah, and they were big. They're huge. They're big. They're yeah. big. Now, when you get your first pugster, it may not uh-huh. be like that to yeah. begin with, but it will grow it that will. way. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yes. And yes. the leaves. You like the leaves too. The uh-huh. leaves. They have got a good green nice. undersides, a yeah, little bit gray. Yeah. Uh-huh. One of my favorites is Harlequin too. Harlequin, you like that one? You know, that's the one that has the variegated leaf. Oh yeah, has so the purple flower, the purple flower uh, yeah. of uh, the standard black knight. Right. But it has a variegated leaf, so right. even when it's not in flower, it's nice. But again, it's going to get big. Big, it's, yeah. It's We're six feet six tall, feet, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Your regular varieties are about six foot. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Black Knight is still one of the best. Oh, it, yes. it just Classic, has that great right? color. Mm-hmm. Um, it's what Beautiful. when you think of butterfly bush, that's the one that's you think of most yeah. of the time. That's a classic. But yeah. there are a lot of uh-huh. dwarf ones that have come out. Oh yeah. Uh, Low and behold. Low and behold. <laughs> that's a good. That's song. one. Yeah. The, there's a petite series. Petite. Mm-hmm. And again, these are going to be two, three foot, something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. You could always put them in a container as well. That's right, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, this Pugster mm-hmm. in a container. Pugster, yeah. Oh, look yeah. at that. On a deck. Yes, wonderful. Very yeah. nice. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Yeah. And you have a small garden. There you go. Right. The little uh, two-footers will work. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's it. Beautiful. You know, it's funny. Next week's show, we're going to talk about how to get plants to rebloom. Oh, yes. There you go. So you put one of these in your yeah. container garden. Yeah. Yes. We'll tell you next week how to get it to uh, reflower. Look at that. All right. All right. We we're we're using a lot of time today. Yes, we so are. we have to go to another break and we'll be right back. Close out today's show. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award winning garden center just twenty minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com 
and we'll see you in the garden. Spring has sprung and it's time to visit Bloomer's Home and Garden Center. Bring us a soil sample and we'll test your soil's pH free. Heck, bring us a water sample from your pond too and we'll test that for ammonia and other critical levels. Did you know that Bloomer's has a pond department? We have all of the water treatments, fish and plants to keep your pond looking glorious year round. Are you looking for that four-step lawn program? Bloomers carries Scott's, Jonathan Green, Bonide, and Espoma's Organic Step Program. Need to seed? Bloomers has its own blend of seed called Township Turf. It's just the right balance of rye, fescue, and bluegrass to give you a spectacular lawn. It's also perfect for repairing bare spots and matches extraordinarily well to sodded lawns. Don't forget the garden. Bloomers carries bumper crop soil amendment and all the fertilizers a garden could need, both organic and inorganic. The best vegetables start as seedlings from Bloomers. Come visit those who know the friendly folks at Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey, just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. For directions and information, visit www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. Wow, Julio, today's show went fast. Oh, Again, you talked way too much. I know. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, all about watering. Uh, water. Listen, water oh. more at one time, less often. Less frequency, yeah. And use your finger as a probe. There you go. There finger it is. Probe. You don't need one of those fancy electronic doodads. <laughs> use your finger. You use go. the weight of the pot. Feel mm-hmm. it that way. That's and right. water more at one time mm-hmm. and less often. There you go. So beautiful. Hey, got next yep. week's show. Uh, can't wait. We've got a lot to talk about. Yes, we do. A lot of people are using all tropicals yes, for are. their patios and porches, things like palms, palms. and uh, mandevilla. 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 So we're going to be talking about how to care for those. We're also going to discuss about hydrangeas, flower, uh, our favorite uh, plant for sure. Uh, yeah. Shrubs. And then we're going to tell you how to grow fuchsias. Fuchsias can uh, be tricky. Yeah, they can be, can't they? We're also going to talk about uh, deadheading uh, annuals and perennials. That's that. And uh, finally, we're going to talk about pruning and shearing to extend bloom time of flowering shrubs and perennials there you go. like uh-huh. butterfly bush. Butterfly bush. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Brett, thank you. Thank you, Brett. Good job today, yes. even though you came in late on the one thing. It's all right. <laughs> That's right. We appreciate your work. That's right. <laughs> we'll see you in the garden. We'll see you in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB, and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com.